Good sit. Good boy. Good boy. Okay. Okay. Good boy. I'm going to have you choose one word to describe your entire time here with this team. If you could think of one single word, what would it be? <laughs> Fantastic. Popped in my head right away. <laughs> I wouldn't trade it for the world. After I left and, and then stopped playing, I had a total realization why you hear all the stories of players having issues, you know, post-career, you know, because you're in, you're in a situation where you are around, you know, geez, 20 to 30 guys, you know, that are all working towards one goal. You've been around these same guys over the over a course of years. Um, and so you're always in a group, you know, you're a team, you know, you're, you're training together, you're traveling together, you're living on the road. You, you see these guys during certain parts of the year more than your family. Then all of a sudden it stops and then you're solo, you're on your own. Is that the administration bully? Yep. I know, in principal's office and stuff. Yeah, office yeah I, I, I never went in there, so I don't know. I was always good. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna stir up some memories. <laughs> some good, some bad, I'm sure. This is the main cafeteria. This is, yeah, this is. Spread out. Cafeteria. This I remember, yeah, right here, you know, coming through being nervous, you know, on the first days with my buddies and trying to figure it out exactly, you know, where we fit in. There we go. <laughs> That's it. First championship. That was, uh, I was on that team. Eric Winalva was on that team too. He was a senior. This I can remember. To my dying day, this is the area. This is the main part of campus right here. I remember this quad, this area. This is when the last day as a senior where you're throwing the papers and throwing everything out and then like you see on TV. This is, I, I remember this like it was yesterday. The, the key for me in this is, look, I was a typical kid, so I was not, not the perfect angel, but I never got caught. <laughs> This hasn't changed at all. The, the soccer field is still a trek, you know, to get to the soccer field. So we would have our team meetings just like, it would be like players sitting on that bench and on this bench and the coach is like here, just hey, there you guys. Yeah, this all used to be, for me, it was dirt track and grass. And as we know, grass with about four teams on it gets beat up really quick. But now turf, I mean, it's fantastic. High school for me was, you know, like anyone else's typical high school years where you are trying to figure out, you know, yourself, you know, in general. Um, it is a little different when you are different than most others. Um, when you look different, you know, than most others, than pretty much everyone. So it, it was just finding my place, you know, within the group. And I always would look upon, you know, my tight group of friends as being the ones that were important to me. So, you know, I always got, you know, the thing that I was shy or I was that, but it wasn't so much, uh, yeah, I was a little bit shy, but it was just one of those things that I wasn't going to put myself out there because I didn't know how, you know, people would react, you know, because I've, I'd experienced all types of things, you know, from a very young age, you know, where, and if you experience it more and more and you hear that people are talking about you some way or this or that, then you just kind of close in on yourself and just say, okay, well, I'm just going to only deal with this group. I don't need to reach out, you know, that much. And that, I think that's how I got, you know, through the high school years of being a, a shy, quiet, you know, type of guy. I remember that year that we did win the championship. Uh, I don't remember there were a lot of cheers for me on the field. That was like the first time that I had ever had that, you know, where by my play during a game that, you know, not, not the parents and you know, all that, but the students, like my peers, you know, were cheering for me. And that was kind of cool. That was kind of like the first time I was like, wow, you know, there's, uh, you know, maybe, maybe something's there, you know, in the, in the soccer world for me.
whenever it would rain, and yes, it does rain in LA every once in a while, and when it would rain a lot. I can remember when we were young, freshmen, we would come down here on the sides, get trash bags on us, and we would just go running and sprinting and dive, you know, face first, you know, and just go sliding down. I, I was a walk-on at UCLA, you know, so I wasn't expected to be on the team. It worked out, so the next tournament was the Las Vegas tournament. I didn't start the first game, but I came in at halftime and had a good showing against Virginia and Bruce Arena, you know, and, and uh, had a couple of uh, good runs, and Miola was in goal on the other team. Uh, it's funny how it all just interconnects. You know? <laughs> and I did so well in that first game that in the next game, uh, he started me. And then in the next game, I got a goal and an assist. And from that point on, I ended up starting all my games at UCLA from freshman through to senior. So that's, that's the long version of, <laughs> or I should say the medium version of a long story. So my dad is a, has a PhD in chemistry. My mom is a school teacher. So you can imagine how, how it, it, and they're both from, she's 40s, 50s, Mobile, Alabama, deep south. So you can imagine for, for my parents how important education was. <laughs> and to approach them to say, yeah, if I wanna go to the Olympics, I have to leave college, <laughs> to leave UCLA. You can imagine the reaction of, of those parents. Quick story to get an idea how my mom was, because she had a lot of sass uh, when she was, when my dad was away and was writing like love notes to her and stuff like that. And mind you, my mom was in college as an as English major. Uh, <laughs> her and her girlfriends, but it was her mainly that got the letters, sent it back to my dad, marked up with red ink, where he <laughs> made grammatical errors. That's my mom, you know? So she was a little uh, firecracker, you know, so to speak. So she was the one that really um, pushed me for everything. And she had faith in whatever I was gonna do. And I think probably one of the biggest things is she wanted me to have the experience. 2002, good year, da 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 da, -da. boom. <laughs> you look at this all Olympians, but that 1992 team had six Olympians come from UCLA. That was a, we had a strong squad. I would say that I, I would consider myself uh, pretty successful in my soccer career in what I wanted to do and the goals that I achieved. Um, that doesn't mean that I achieved all of them. And without a doubt, I, I did not achieve all of them. And, and, and of course, there's regrets. Everybody has regrets. You always set more goals for yourself. Life isn't about stopping, <laughs> you know. Life is about continuing to, to go and trying to achieve and, and get the next step, having that consistency of doing something more and more and more. All right, are you ready? Yep. All right. You play the game to win. You play all these games to win, but especially for me, yes, I play soccer to win. It's. It starts out, yes, you're playing for fun as a young kid, but you get to a certain point where you're playing to win. Now, don't get me wrong, it should never always be about just the winning, but there's a significant part of this game is about the winning, and that's what makes it more enjoyable at every level. 